um, Phil Jones from Expert Shearing Equipment, manufacturers of the uh, Expert Comb and Cutter Pendulum. Talking about hollow grinding, where's it come from? Do you need it? Don't you? Etc. A few mates constantly remind me that uh, I can't shear enough sheep to uh, make a decent stew. And uh, yeah, that, that'd, <laughs> that'd be pretty right. Um, I never was much of a shearer, but. Um, what I have done over the years is uh, I've worked for a prominent comb and cutter, handpiece, shearing equipment in general manufacturer. This overseas family owned company um, employed me years ago when the marketplace in Australia and New Zealand, they had about around 5% of the market. I worked with them doing the research and development and the design on shearing equipment for some 25 years. When I started with them, we had around 5%, a bit under uh, percent of the marketplace. And uh, when I finished with them, we had around over 80% of the market in shearing equipment between Australia and New Zealand. So I led the, a team, a bloody good team. I didn't do it on my own. Definitely can't do that sort of stuff on your own. I had a fantastic team working with me and a fantastic team of shearers. And people at the factory overseas that were excellent to work with. They listened well and uh, they gave what we asked and we progressed through the industry. It was a fantastic time to be working at, the, at this company. We had uh, a fantastic boss. He was a, a, a hell of a good guy. Uh, the amount of money that he spent on research and development on shearing equipment uh, he should be in the Shearers Hall of Fame, without a shadow of a doubt in my eyes. This guy should be in the Shearers Hall of Fame. He's taken the industry from where it was up to where it is today, and uh, he made gear a lot safer. He made it more repetitive. He, he made it so that you could go to the shop and buy a packet of combs, and it'd be the same as the packet of combs that you bought two months ago. So it, it really, really changed the industry. Bought in bearing hand pieces that worked uh, safety shearing planes, uh, combs and cutters that didn't lock up, etc., etc. So it, it was a it was a fantastic time to be at the company, and I learned a hell of a lot. I learned a hell of a lot. Let me tell you, as they did at the same time. So I left the company after twenty five years and uh, went off doing other things. But my passion has always been making things cut. I love to make things cut. I know damn well that if you've got a drill and a drill bit and you want to drill a hole, but the drill bit's blunt, it, you can't or it doesn't do it effectively. As soon as you sharpen it, zing, in it, in it goes. Combs and cutters are no different. If you've got combs and cutters that cut and cut well, you can shear more sheep. The sheep sit a lot better. They don't, not so fidgety. You don't cut them as much. You don't cut yourself as much. You use less tools, so your tools will cut longer. And when you sharpen them, you don't have to grind off so much material to get them sharp. You don't need so much tension on your handpiece. Your handpiece runs cooler and your handpiece will last longer. Absolutely, all these facts are, are true. As well, most of you know. But how do you do it and, and, and what happens? We've, at our website, we've put up many a video on grinding combs and cutters and how to do it, how not to do it, how to set up one thing, another thing. Something I think we've never explained well enough is the hollow. So what is the hollow? How do we get it? And what does it mean to us? Uh, let's have a go at, at explaining that. So do you need it? Do you need a hollow? Everything that I've ever found that cuts has a scissor action. So here's an old set of blades that old mate made me in South Africa one time. Um, they set a drummer boys. If you, if you have a look, the blades cross over one another, or this blade comes out this way, this blade goes out that way, and they form a hollow. If you can see when I've got them closed, there's actually a gap all the way between it, and they're only touching at the tips here. So they've theoretically got a, a scissor action, not theoretically, they have got a scissor action, and they have got a hollow. One goes one way, one goes the other way, and away we go. So that's all the shears. Let's get a bit agricultural and uh, have a look at the garden shears. Garden shears exactly the same thing. They cross over. This one goes this way, this one goes this way, and you close them up, and when you've got them closed up, 
you can see a gap down 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 the center here so it's only touching at the tip when it's closed so it's got a scissor action a pair of tin snips a pair of tin snips is exactly the same when it's closed we've got a gap down here yet they cut from the back all the way to the tip because one goes this way one goes the other way and that's how they work scissor action a pair of scissors this is the same we've got a scissor action if one goes this way one goes that way they start at the back here and as they close up they only touch at the tips and of course as we know the pair of scissors or second tiers or even the old hand shears if they don't cut properly we just put a bit more scissor action in them or we bend them to put a bit more hollow in them so scissors are exactly the same clipper blades these little clipper blades that you get your hair cut with or cut your dog with cut your head dog's hair with or, or, or whatever they're the same they they are ground with a hollow from here to here and a hollow from here to here and they only touch at the tips and they every tooth cuts from the back to the tip difference with these is is that the tension for these is put on by this spring here there's no there's no tension nut so it's put on by this spring a close up of that there's a, a spring here that puts the tension on if you haven't got enough tension on the spring it doesn't cut if you've got too much it gets hot it gets hot it doesn't cut as well it doesn't cut as long and makes the handpiece hot etc so here's the clipper that these blades come off and when we put them on here you can see there's no there's no tension nut on this so these clipper blades are ground by yeah people who have been trained <laughs> it's quite an art actually in grinding sharpening them and people who sharpen them then, then we get to the beast that we know the shearer's hand piece and that's the same we've got a hollow from here to here we've got a hollow on the top and each one of these eight cutting edges on the on the cutter and the cu cutting edges on the comb all come together and they cut the difference being is that with this one here we've got 24 cutting edges on the comb and we've got eight cutting edges on the cutter so we need the hollow to be the same all the way across so we need the hollow to be nice and even on the comb and the cutter so that we get the same pressure that we get on any one of these tools we get them the same on on each tooth now you can have it so that it sort of cuts and it's sort of okay and you can make it cut by playing with this the more tension you put on here the you eventually you'll make it cut it's the same with this pair of shears these things here are pretty old belong to your father-in-law actually the, these things here are pretty bloody old and uh, and they don't they don't cut that well so every now and then i just give them a twist in the vice and pull this up and push that down and gets a bit more tension on it or tighten up the tension up here and and, and sort of make them cut if i was using these for eight hours a day seven days five days a week i'd want it to cut a lot better than what they do now and that's what you're using here so the better you can sharpen this the longer each comb or cutter will cut the better it will cut and then the least amount of tension that you have to put on this tension nut then the cooler your handpiece will run the longer your center post and cup will last etc so okay so we've worked out that we need we need a hollow or we need a scissor action we need a scissor action so where do we get our scissor action from with a uh, shears disc we get our shears disc and have a go have a look what happens is, is if we get something that's straight right out of our expert pendulum and put it across here 
it rocks. The further we bring it to the centre, the more it rocks. Pretty hard to see. I've tried to explain this before and I find it pretty hard. So what I've done is I've made up this disc turned up by the local old fellas down at the men's shed in Mandra. Good on you boys. Um, and what I've done is it's the same as a shearer's disc. It's flat from here to here. So this is flat. Absolutely flat. But it's got a bigger fold. It's exaggerated what the shearer's disc does. If I put this across here, it rocks. The more I bring it in, the more it rocks. Exactly the same as a shearer's disc. If we have a look at this edge here that I've cut away, you can see the shape across here, which causes the hollow when you grind. So if we put a comb on here, that comb will grind away until such time as the shape of the disc is reflected into the comb. Got it? So if we grind our comb on either side, doesn't matter, and we grind our cutter, grab it, we get a hollow in our comb and we get a hollow in our cutter. So now we've got a hollow in each. We bring them together and we've got a scissor action. That's, that's how it happens. Hollow comes from here, hollow comes from here, bring them together and we get a scissor action. The art of getting them all in the one plane was so that each scissor action has the same tension between this tooth and this tooth, here, 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 and here and here, is in your grinding. Um, have a look at our website, expertsheepshearingequipment.com and you'll find all stuff on, on there on, on how to get them all in the in the one plane. It's how you grind, you've got to wear the emery out flat, you've got to have sparks coming from all the way across the comb, all the way across the cutter, for the life of your comb, emery and your cutter emery. As soon as you haven't got spark coming from somewhere on your comb or your cutter emery, change the emery. Whereabouts should we grind on the on the disc is always a controversial thing. <laughs> um, you should grind with the radius of the disc, and there's radiuses all the way around the disc, but pick a radius and you adjust the length of your pendulum to where you want to finish your cutter. So you grind it to where you want, you adjust the length of your pendulum to where you want the cutter to finish on the disc. And you want the, the radius to go through the center of the cutter. And it's exactly the same as the comb. You adjust the length of your pendulum till such time as the center of the comb is on the radius, straight through the radius. So the radius comes straight through the middle of the comb. Then we end up with an even hollow this way and an even hollow in the cutter. The two come together and we get a scissor action. Okay, what happens if we don't? If we don't, what happens is we get our handpiece and we grind our comb low. So if we grind our comb low, the hollow will end up through the comb on an angle or the comb rocks over the disc like so. So once it's ground, the whole surface is ground, then the hollow is going through at an angle like this. So it's going through at an angle like so. So the hollow is going through the comb across this way. Because it's going across that way, this point here is high, this point here is high, this is low because it's down in the hollow, and this is low because it's down in the hollow. The cutter is the same, exactly the same. If you don't grind it on the radius, then you end up with a high and a high and a low and a low. What difference does that make? 
when you put the comb onto the handpiece, have a look at, have a think about how the handpiece works. The handpiece works like a cyclone gate. So you've got one hinge here, one hinge here, and that's your fork. Goes makes the fork go backwards and forwards over the comb. So if this is a hinge and this is a hinge and this is your cyclone gate, and your comb is ground with a hollow going this way, then when you put your comb on, this point touches first, and this one touches last, and it your comb dips down. So your comb is now no longer flat. When they manufacture a handpiece, they manufacture it the same as a, as a, a cyclone gate or a gate. You've got a center post, oh, uh, center post. You've got a hinge and a hinge. You've got a, a gate, and the comb bed is the ground. So the, they manufacture it also. The gate swings evenly over the ground. You've all pulled up to a gate and go. Open the gate, mate. No, mate, goes to open it the wrong way. You go, no, it comes only comes this way. Well, it only comes this way because the ground's crooked. And imagine if that was your comb, the ground was your comb, and it's not even. Then you get pressure on one side all the time, and no pressure on the other. So, but that's easy enough to fix because you just wound a bit more tension on. Now you're putting, getting heat wear again. So the game is to get your ground level. You get your ground level by grinding at the right height on your disc. Once you ground at the right height on the disc and you've got the same pressure or the gate's working evenly or swinging evenly or your fork is going evenly over the comb, comb's fitting onto the comb bed nice, then we get the same tension on each tooth. How can you check it? You can check it using the stone of truth. There's a video again on here about the stone of truth and shows you how to rub up combs and cutters to check your hollow. Um, a lot of furphy around about the stone of truth um, and I all think it's because it's too hard. Um, if you're not game enough to test and measure then um, yeah you're never going to learn. Uh, you use a tally counter at work to see how many sheep you've shorn during the day and so you get a result. Um, guys go out and do a record and they uh, count their sheep to most sheep shorn gets the record of course and but then they test and measure so they count the sheep that's the measure and they test it with the judge out the back so they're game enough to go into a record test and measure and, and then they get the accolades because they break a record so if you're not going to test and measure and check the quality of your grinding well then don't expect to move forward to move forward in this industry you need to test and measure you, you do it to yourself all day every day how fast can my car go how many miles of a gallon do I get? Uh, how many sheep can I shear? Etc. Uh, Etc. Et how much money have I got in the bank? How much did I earn? How much tax didn't I pay? Etc. You're testing and measuring yourself all the time. So learn to test and measure your comb and your cutter. So that's the hollow. Hope I've explained it. The other way that you get a hollow is from grinding, from the heat. When you grind a comb or a cutter, you grind this side, and this side gets hot. As this side gets hot, it expands. So this side expands more than this side because it's hotter. As it gets hot, it expands or pulls back or as you're grinding the comb or the cutter pulls back and you grind the guts out of it and then it cools down and it comes back again. We've all ground a comb or a cutter on a bug of paper and get a bit of a brown spot in the middle. Well, the brown spot in the middle is always on this side and it's not on this side. That's because this side's hotter. So this side is expanding more or it comes out more. So you get a bit of a hollow, not much of a hollow, but you do get a bit of a hollow You could from, from the heat. The hollow from the disc is more important and more repetitive. And yeah, makes it a lot more difference to your cut. So there's a couple of things about the hollow grind, where it comes from, why you need it, why you need the hollow in the right spot. Uh, I hope it's helped you and uh, has made it a bit easier for you. If you, uh, Need to know some more, go on our website, have a look. It's free of charge. Go and have a look. There's some handy hints on there. I hope it helps and I hope it makes shooting a bit easier for you. Good on you. Cheers.